So hello everybody. So as you know, I am going to uh, deal uh, with these EPAC proteins uh, in cardiac disease. And uh, in my lab, we are working in the field of uh, cardiac remodeling and heart failure, especially we try to understand the mechanism which are involved in uh, cardiac remodeling. And as you know, cardiac remodeling is a sort of dynamic process which involve fibrosis formation, rust production, and even senescence. And this can lead, depending on the duration of the stress, to heart failure development. So as you know, cyclic MP is uh, an important signal messenger in the heart because it regulates uh, various calcium ending proteins. It is uh, produced following the activation of the beta adrenergic receptor, which are key receptors involved in the regulation of the contraction relaxation. So cyclic MP induces biological effect via the classical effector, which is the protein kinase A. And in cardiac mycelium, this is the schematic representation. The PKA is well known to regulate various calcium handling proteins, such as the L-type calcium channel, the ranodan receptor, to induce massive uh, release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the phospholamban, and the myofilaments. This is acute stimulation of the beta-anergic receptor, which, is, which has beneficial effect in the heart. However, during the stress conditions, such as an excess of catecholamines, this chronic activation of beta-adrenergic receptor is detrimental to the heart and can induce, as you know, cardiac remodeling, which can lead to heart failure. So it's really important to dissect or to decode the molecular mechanism which are involved in, uh, which couple the beta-adrenergic receptor to cardiac remodeling. So again, this is a schematic representation of uh, cardiac myocytes, you see that cyclic MP uh, can activate uh, PKA, but there is an additional target for cyclic MP. PDE are well known to uh, regulate cyclic MP degradation on a shape uh, gradient of cyclic AMP, uh, on uh, regulate the duration of cyclic MP signaling. But uh, these impact proteins uh, are also expressed in cardiac myocytes. Actually, they have been cloned. Uh, 20 years ago uh, uh, by two independent groups, uh, one in the US and one in Europe. Uh, on this EPAC-1, on two isoforms, uh, can bind cyclic N3 and regulate uh, the activation of the small GTPases of the RAS family, especially RAP. So the discovery of the expression of this protein inside the heart raised the question of, the, of, of their function in uh, cardiac function, but also in uh, to understand what are their role in physiopathological conditions. So just to explain you how does this protein work, actually the two isoform IPAC1 and IPAC2 share the same structural organization. You see that in the C-terminal part, there is a catalytic region which contains a GEF domain. It is a catalytic domain which can switch on the small GTPAs is RAP. Uh, the RAS exchange motif contributes to stabilize this catalytic region. And in the N-terminal part of the protein, there is the regulatory region which contains a high affinity binding site for cyclic MP. On impact 2 you can see that there is an additional cyclic MP binding site, which, whose function is not very well known. It could be that it is involved in cellular membrane localization, like the depth domain. So how does this protein work? Actually, there are two states in this protein. In the absence of cyclic MP, you see that the regulatory domain can block the access of the catalytic domain to its effector. Upon binding of cyclic MP, there is a huge change in the conformation of IPAC1 protein, which can induce uh, the interaction of the catalytic domain with its effectors, the small GTPases. So following the binding of cyclic AMP, uh, there is this change of conformation which can then switch on the effector RAP. So one of the first experiments that we did is just to uh, 
monitor the expression of EPAC protein, especially EPAC1, in various models of uh, cardiac remodeling, such as chronic activation of beta adrenergic receptor, cardiac ischemia, myocardial pressure overload, on whatever the species, mice or rats, and even in human hearts, we found that there is a, an increase of EPAC1 expression during cardiac remodeling on heart failure. So the next step was to understand what is the functional effect of this upregulation of EPAC1 expression in the heart in stress condition. So for that, we uh, use uh, some molecular tools, some pharmacology tools, which were available at that time. So it's already 15 years ago. You see that when you use this cyclic MP analog, which is a preferential activator, ACPT, its name is ACPT. So this drug is able to activate preferentially APAC1. And in primary cardiac myocytes, you see that this drug is able to increase various markers of cardiac myocytes hypertrophy. So the next step was to understand whether this process was regulated by the receptor, by membrane receptor, especially by the beta adrenergic receptor. And yes, it was. We found that uh, this uh, EPAC1 protein, when knocked down in primary cardiac myocytes, uh, uh, abrogate the effect of chronic activation of beta adrenergic receptor on cardiac myocytes hypertrophy, as you can see here. This is a quantification of the cell surface. So it was also important to uh, develop other tools to further understand the, the role of EPAC in uh, cardiac remodeling. And for that, uh, with uh, Rodolphe Fischmeister in uh, Chanet Malabry, we developed this first uh, inhibitor of EPAC-1, C304, and also with uh, Jean-Paul Blondeau in Paris. And this inhibitor is really important in blocking uh, uh, the effect of chronic activation of beta adrenergic receptor on cardiac myocytes hypertrophy. So we then investigated the role of EPAC1 in vivo using mouse model for uh, uh, knockout mice model for EPAC1. So we use this model of chronic activation of uh, beta adrenergic receptor with uh, ISO for one month. And you see that uh, ISO induced massive uh, production of fibrosis, which was prevented in APAC1 deleted mice, you can see here. And at the cellular level, you see that there is uh, less hypertrophy in APAC1 uh, knockout mice. So what about the functional, the function, uh, the functional effect of APAC1 gene deletion on the heart, on cardiac function, and you see that there is um, much more fractional shortening in the absence of APAC1. You see that the contractility is increased in the absence of APAC1 in stress condition. There is no effect of APAC1 gene deletion on basal contraction, on basal cardiac function, but on the other hand, in stress condition, the heart, uh, the contractility is better. So to further understand the, the role of this protein, we uh, in vivo, we recently developed a novel APAC1 pharmacological inhibitor by combining virtual screening on APAC1, Brett Probase, and found that uh, this inhibitor is working very well in vitro because uh, when you treat the cell with this compound named AM001, you can block APAC1 activation induced by increasing concentration of cyclic EMP. So what's about uh, what ha what's happened in vivo if you use this compound? Again, we use this uh, mouse model of cardiac hypertrophy induced by chronic treatment with beta adrenergic receptor. And three days after the treatment with isoprinaline, uh, we uh, gave a daily injection of this compound of this inhibitor of APAC1. And you see that uh, cardiac hypertrophy in stress condition was reduced in the animals treated with this inhibitor of APAC1. But also we observed that uh, the animals display less fibrosis in the presence of these compounds induced by isoprenaline. That means that these compounds AM001 mitigates cardiac remodeling. What about the function? You see that after a couple of 
uh, a couple of weeks treatment with uh, isoprenaline. There is a decrease of the fractional shortening. This is well known. And when you treat the animals with this compound AM1, you prevent the, you improve the cardiac function. You increase the fractional shortening compared to the group of vehicle group. So in accordance with this finding, less ventricular dilatation was reduced in the group treated with the compound AM001. So what makes the link between uh, the stress impact on cardiac remodeling. So one important observation was the finding that this IPAC1 activation by HCPT, by this agonist, can activate chyme kinase 2 in adult rat cardiac myocytes. And this was prevented by the chyme kinase 2 inhibitor, KN93. And this was performed in adult rat cardiac myocytes. But more recently, it has been, sh been shown by a uh, birth uh, group that uh, IPAC1 may also activate chyme kinase 2 in adult rabbit cardiac myocytes. So, and this process uh, is independent of PKA because ISO can still increase chyme kinase 2 activation in the absence of PKA activation induced by this uh, drug H89. So it turns out that this protein chyme kinase KNS2 seems to be a crucial effector of IPAC1 in cardiac myocytes. But the situation is really more complex because this uh, protein IPAC1 is a multi-domain protein which may interact with various molecular partners, especially the beta arrestine, which is a well-known scalfold protein which is involved in the synthesization of the beta adrenergic receptor. This beta arrestine is able to interact with IPAC1. And under stress condition, this is in vitro evidence that this complex beta restine IPAC1 can uh, translocate to the membrane and then switch on a specific signaling pathway involving PLC epsilon, which can then induce sort of increase of nuclear calcium in cardiac myocytes to stimulate the activity of calcium sensitive proteins such as the chyme kinase 2 which can induce, as you know, epigenetic regulation, such as nuclear export of HDAC protein and the subsequent activation of the pro-hypertrophic transcription factor. So this is a model. More recently, we also observed that this protein in PAC1 is able to interact with a novel protein, not novel, but a protein which is well known to interact with the beta adrenergic receptor on, on which is also involved in beta-adrenergic receptor desensitization. And we found that this protein, uh, IPAC1, can interact with GRK5 after chronic activation of the beta-adrenergic receptor. And this complex may be translocated inside the nuclei of cardiac myocytes to induce epigenetic regulation, again, such as HDAC nuclear export and a subsequent activation of MEV2 transcription factors. So again, we observe that blocking APAC1 with after ISO treatment can prevent the nuclear translocation of this non-canonical non action of GRK5. And also this inhibitor of APAC1 prevent HDAC5 nuclear exports. So this protein APAC, like cyclic MP compartmentation uh, is highly uh, Express in various subcellular uh, compartments. It is uh, not only expressed uh, at the cellular membrane, but also it, is, uh, it has been shown to be uh, uh, at the vicinity of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, where it regulates probably via, by, with IPAC2 the activation of the rhinodal receptor. And it is uh, suggested that uh, this complex IPAC1 2 and chyme kinase 2 can induce sort of calcium leak to promote cardiac arrhythmia. And we also found that uh, this protein APAC1 is also expressed in other subcellular compartments, especially at the myofilament where it regulates calcium sensitivity. So more recently, we observed that in the N-terminal part, that there is a functional mitochondrial targeting sequence. And this mitochondrial targeting sequence allows 
the expressional use expression of HEPAC1, as shown here by Western blood in mitochondria. After cell fractionation, you see that this protein HEPAC1 is, only, is not only expressed in the matrix space, but also in the inner membrane of mitochondria, together inside the matrix with chyme kinase 2. So the, the crucial effector of HEPAC1, chyme kinase 2, is also expressed inside the mitochondria. So to test the functional uh, relevance of HEPAC1 or inside mitochondria, we use this uh, well-known model of ischemia reperfusion in mouse. You know that ischemia reperfusion uh, can induce uh, injury in heart, and uh, this includes via a specific uh, molecular pathway, which uh, include calcium upregulation inside the mitochondria, rust production, which can trigger the MPTP opening cytochrome C release on cardiac myocyte cell. So to further investigate the role of EPAC in this uh, ischemia reperfusion injury, we use a pharmacological approach using this novel compound, AM001, but also genetic modified mice, EPAC1 knockout mice. And you can see here for the same area risk, infarct size is decreased in the presence when you uh, inject the compound five minutes before the reperfusion, there is a decrease of the infarct size. And we got similar findings when we use NOCAN mice for EPAC1 with the AM inhibitor, the inhibitor of EPAC1. So how does it work, this uh, deleterious effect of EPAC1 inside the mitochondria in uh, ischemia or perfusion condition. Actually, we observe that when you directly activate EPAC1 with HCPT, you have an increase of calcium inside the mitochondria. This was, uh, the experiments was performed using a, a mitochondrial calcium probe, road 2 AM. And this is, was performed in uh, white type cardiac myocytes. And the absence of uh, EPAC1, you see that we lose the regulation indicating that this process is selective of EPAC1 and activation of EPAC1 increase mitochondrial calcium overload. So we also observed after size exclusion chromatography and Western blood analysis that this protein EPAC1 can form a macromolecular complex with this protein named VDAC voltage anion channel one to Chaperone glucose receptor protein 75, the IP3 receptor type 1. On this complex, VDAC, GRP5, GRP75, and IP3 is highly enriched at the junction of the ER on the mitochondria. It is highly expressed at the mitochondria associated ER membranes. And what the function of this complex is to regulate the transfer of calcium from the ER to the mitochondria. And you see here, when you directly activate EPAC1 with this drug, with this agonist, you increase the complex formation. You see that there is much more interaction with IP3 receptor following EPAC activation with ACPT, GRP75, but also VTAC1, but not with the radiodan receptor indicating that there is a specificity in the complex formation. And at the functional level, we use histamine to investigate the role of EPAC in this process because histamine uh, is well known to induce calcium transfer via the IP3 receptor from the ER to the mitochondria. So you see here that histamine induces mitochondrial calcium load and the presence of LCPT, the presence of EPAC1 activation, there is an increase of calcium overload inside the mitochondria. And this was blocked by a selective inhibitor of EPAC1 C3 and 4. That means that EPAC1 activation facilitates the transfer of calcium from the ER to the mitochondria. Another aspect of ischemia injury is the formation of ROS. So we measure ROS uh, production uh, using uh, this DHE staining following ischemia reperfusion. And you see that uh, EPAC1 gene deletion prevents the increase of ROS formation in the heart of mice. And here at the cellular level, we observe that uh, using this mitosox probe that HCPT, direct activation of EPAC can increase, as you can see, this is a quantification, mitochondrial ROS production 
which was prevented by this inhibitor of EPAC1 C34. And in the absence of EPAC1 gene, we didn't observe any ROS production after EPAC activation, as you can see here. So that means that EPAC1 is involved in mitochondrial ROS production. So we reveal the phosphoproteome of EPAC1 and found that by mass spectrometry analysis and found that this protein interact with many mitochondrial proteins. And one of them is the IDH2. And this IDH2 is highly expressed in mitochondria in the matrix space. And his role is very really important because it is involved in the synthesis of inner DPH, which is well known to regulate the production of glutathione. And glutathione is one of the most potent antioxidant molecules in cells. So IPAC1 targets IDH2, it can regulate the activity of IDH2, as you can see here, when you directly activate EPAC or even in hypoxy oxygenation condition, there is a decrease of IDH2 activity, which was prevented by this inhibitor of EPAC1. And also when you delete EPAC1 gene, you uh, rescue the activity of IDH2. That means that uh, this uh, EPAC1 protein can uh, increase ROS formation probably via its negative action, its negative action on IDH2. So again, we found that this time kinase or EPAC1 time kinase two axis is involved in the regulation of IDH2 because uh, activating EPAC1 with this drug HCPT uh, and in the presence of CAM kinase 2 inhibitor uh, fail to uh, decrease the activation of IDH2. So this axis EPAC1, CAM kinase 2 inside the mitochondria is able to inhibit IDH2. So we came to the following model that during ischemia or perfusion, there is a burst of cyclic MP, probably because ischemia can induce uh, the production of cyclic MP independently of the beta adrenergic receptor via the activation of the soluble adenylate cyclase. And you see here that uh, EPAC1 is then activated and can have many actions inside the mitochondria in stress condition. You see that uh, there is a calcium, transfer of calcium from the R to the mitochondria and EPAC1 activation in this specific stress condition can induce the production of ROS and together this increase of calcium and ROS production may trigger cardiac myocyte death via the opening of the MP. So as you know, just to finish my, my uh, talk, uh, I will illustrate the, the role of IPAC1 in energy production because mitochondria, as you know, are involved in the production of energy. On glucose, and fatty acids are well known to account for the synthesis of ATP in cardiac myocytes via the glycolase, which produce pyruvate, which induces the production of acetyl coenzyme R, which fuels the Krebs cycle to induce ATP synthesis. And the fatty acids are broken down inside the fatty acid beta oxidation to fuel the Krebs cycles and to induce ATP formation. So this is not in normal condition. So what's happened in metabolic dysregulation, such as observed in diabetes or obesity, there is a shift in the energy substrate use, a decrease in glucose utilization, an increase of the beta oxidation, because of an increase of lipid uptake. And this can be detrimental to the mitochondria because this excess of lipid, the excess of ROS, can induce mitochondrial dysfunction, a decrease of ATP synthesis, and then this can contribute to the development of lipotoxic or diabetic cardiomyopathy, which is well known to have a diastolic, to present diastolic dysfunction. So we use a simple model of lipotoxic stress uh, with palmitate. Palmitate is a toxic saturated fatty acid. And uh, when we treat the primary cardiac myocytes with palmitate, we observe that there is an increase of cell death, of cardiac myocyte death, which was prevented by this inhibitor of IPAC1 C34. That means that IPAC1 inhibition prevents 
palmitat induce cell death in primary cardiac myocytes. So is it the mitochondrial uh, form of EPAC1 that is involved in this process? So for that, we uh, construct a mutant lacking the mitochondrial targeting sequence and transfect this mutant in primary cardiac myocytes. And then we measure ROS production. And you can see here, after palmitat treatment, in the presence of EPAC, there is an increase of ROS production, which was decreased when you prevent the localization of EPAC inside the mitochondria. And this also translates on caspas 3 activity on apoptosis. You have less apoptosis in the presence when you transfect the mutant compared to the white type form on a ROS production or cardiomyocyte death with decrease in the presence after transfection of this mutant. So what about the, the effect of EPAC1 in this stress condition in, during a lipotoxic stress on the mitochondrial function? You see that when you treat the cells for, for a long time, for several hours, you have a decrease of respiration by palmitate. This is adult Y-type cardiac myocytes. Also, there is more depolarization, mitochondrial demotrial depolarization, and uh, this translates on ROS production. You have more ROS production in the presence of palmitate. On EPAC1 gene deletion in cardiac myocytes, uh, we restore mitochondrial respiration, and also there is much less mitochondrial depolarization on ROS production. That means that blocking the activation of this, in it, this protein prevents palmitate-induced mitochondrial dysfunction. So we are currently uh, investigating the role of this protein uh, in uh, beta oxidation, in the beta oxidation, uh, because this protein EPAC1 is able to interact with uh, various uh, enzymes of this uh, mitochondrial beta oxidation spiral. And the next step will be to investigate the role of this protein EPAC1 in mouse model of diabetic cardiomyopathy uh, induced, for instance, by high fat diet. So in summary, you can see here, this is a complex cartoon, but keep in mind that very uh, subcellular compartments, which are dysregulated by EPAC. EPAC1 can interact with chyme kinase to influence inside the mitochondria, ROS production, calcium overload. In the nucleus, it can regulate transcription factor via epigenetic regulation, uh, to induce hypertrophic gene program, and it is also involved in the regulation of uh, the ranodine receptor on D7 may also participate to cardiac rim disorders. So I would like to finish my talk by uh, acknowledging all my colleagues of my laboratory and also all the partners which have been involved in this work. And thank you very much for your attention. And I will be happy to take, to read your question. Thank you, Dao. Thank you, Frank, for, for a wonderful talk. And I would like to start by asking you a question. And I, I think I've read it all already in one of, of the Q&A box. And I noticed that you put a question mark in the activation or, or in how the activation of the EPAC leads to the activation of CAM kinase 2. Do you have any suggestion of which is the mechanism? We don't have any clear evidence how does EPAC can activate CAM kinase 2. We don't know whether it is even dependent on RAP, which is the main effector of EPAC. It could be that, uh, uh, as I said, the PLC can. Uh, and use after its interaction with RAP, uh, calcium, increase of calcium, and uh, via the IP3 production. And this uh, specific signaling pathway can then activate uh, CAM kinase 2. So it could be that is calcium dependent. It could be that other proteins can directly uh, uh, influence the activity of CAM kinase 2 after EPAC1 activation, such as June kinase, could be, it's a, could be a good candidate of uh, the missing link between uh, CAM kinase 2 and EPAC1. But at the moment, we don't have any, there is no consensus. 
first, and we don't have any clear explanation on the missing link between IPAC1 and chyme kinase. Okay, so I would like to I start to read the questions uh, from Hector Chapov or Chapoy. Great talk. So, do you know what relationship between MCU and EPAG1? I ask for the for your experience of for calcium uptake. What is the relationship between MCU and the and EPAG1? EPAG1? Yes, because when you block the MCU, you block the calcium overload and you buy APAC1. So there is clearly a connection between the MCU and the exchange protein inside the mitochondria. Um, a question from Alicia Matiasi. Uh, very nice results. Have you looked at the possi possible effects of campkinase to inhibition on the protective effects of APAC knockout on your IR injury? No, we didn't uh, test this hypothesis, but this, this is a good idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Rosanna Bassani, very nice talk. Do you have any idea of the mitochondrial calcium entry pathway under EPAC activation? Thank you. Could you repeat, please? The, the, the entrance of calcium from the mitochondria driven by EPAC. So we, we think that there is uh, this uh, MAM which are, are involved in this uh, calcium of this transfer of calcium from the R to the mitochondria. So we do know exactly how does it go inside the mitochondria, but at least this molecular complex is, is involved in this regulation, in this effect of EPAC. And this involves the MCU and also the IP3 receptor, because if you block IP3, you, can, you prevent the accumulation of calcium inside the mitochondria and used by EPAC1 activation. Mm -hmm. So you need a complex. You need everything. Yeah, you need a complex for mm -hmm. sure. Um, from Alicia Matiasi again, uh, have you checked uh, for the phosphorylation of ryanodine receptor and phospholamban in the EPAC uh, knockout mice during yeah, yeah. stimulant perfusion? Yeah, very good point. Yeah, we should do it. We, we didn't do that. Yeah, yeah from an anonymous attendee, wonderful work, uh, well done. Is there any link between RAP1 and cardiac disease status or disease progression? RAP1. Uh, we didn't investigate uh, the, the expression level of RAP1 during uh, cardiac remodeling and even in mm -hmm. other cardiac disease, but this is a very good point. But actually we, uh, we saw, we, uh, we demonstrated that it was not RAP1, but it was RAP2, which was involved in the hypertrophic effect of EPAC1. So there are very, there are many other forms of RAP. There are several uh, uh, isoforms, RAP1 and RAP2, and uh, inside this isoform, there are subclassification, RAP2B, to A, to C, and it's very uh, difficult to conclude on the exact isoform which is involved in the deleterious, in the deleterious effect of EPAC1. But this has to be done, yeah. The link between mm -hmm. RAP1 and cardiac disease, yeah. But Cecilia, do From, you want to yes. jump in here? So, yeah. so Frank, I mean, um, so it, RAP1 is expressed presumably in other are. cell types as well, right? So yeah, yeah. if we're gonna target, I mean, presumably, you know, this is one of the potential therapeutic targets that you can come up with. Does it have differential effects, you know, on different tissues and different organs? Presumably it does. And will that I mean, be a problem if you're trying to target this, this uh, signaling pathway? What is amazing is this protein is only activated in stress conditions. Okay. You reveal an action of EPAC1, or also two, I think, in the heart, only when you stress the heart or the cardiac myocytes, you know. And in resting condition, you don't see so many effects, at least on cardiac function, if you knock down EPAC1, or also if you treat the animals with this inhibitor, you don't mm -hmm. see any clear effect of EPAC1 on basal cardiac function. And uh, you have to induce a stress to reveal a function of this specific protein. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be that you don't have so many second side effects regarding a potent or an inhibitor or molecules that block the activation of this protein. Okay, and that is the case in other cell types as well, for example, endothelial cells. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Thank you. Okay, so from Luc uh, Bertrand. Hello, Frank, a splendid presentation, interesting paradigm. What is the effect of AM001 or EPAC knockout in more severe pathological hypertrophic models such as TAC, where well, the ejection fraction is uh, drastically decreased? Yeah, we didn't try yeah, because uh, we have to do a daily injection of the compound because if you put it inside mini pump, the compound is degraded. So you have to do mm. a daily injection of the compound. So we use a let's say a couple of weeks stress, but uh, not a one month stress. But this has to be done uh, for sure, yeah. Thank you, Luke, yeah. Uh, from Thomas Brand. Um, hi, Frank, nice talk. How, how EPAC is modulating Calcranes 2? And does it keep the enzyme in an active conformation or is kinase activity not important for the EPAC defects? Uh, I think the kinase activity is really important, important for EPAC effects yeah. because uh, the targets of EPAC are many enzymes which are regulated by phosphorylation. So it's really important to have this uh, kinase activity effect. And how does it work? We still don't know yet. Yeah. 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 Again, Thank from Luc so uh, Bertrand, hyperglycemia is also known to participate in the production of ROS in diabetes. Do you test AM001 under hyperglycemic glycemic conditions? Yeah, not yet, yeah. Yeah, this is a not good yet. suggestion, yeah. Thank coming, you. coming, coming. Yeah. <laughs> From Matthew Ruiz, a nice talk and great work, Frank. In your model with EPAC knockout, you showed a decrease in IDA2. Did you evaluate it or think to do the level of some Krebs cycle intermediates and particularly the 2HG expected to decrease since IDH is also decreased? That is known. That is now described having multiple metabolic and cellular effects. No, we didn't do yet, but we have some uh, evidence. For, we have maybe some preliminary data showing that uh, EPAC one is influencing the glycolysis, and uh, mm -hmm. could be, of course, that uh, you have some effect, uh, as uh, suggested by Mathieu, yeah, on the Krebs cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, from Philippe uh, Padua. Dear friend, very nice presentation. Do you have uh, the demonstration that EPAC1 activation in mitochondria is having an effect on the reduction of the level of N NADPH? What is yeah, the effect reduce, of... Yeah. Yeah, you can aspects. reduce the... Yeah. We measure the level of NADPH, which was reduced in the presence of EPAC1 activation. And... Uh, EPAC-1, uh, the respiration, the mitochondrial respiration was uh, decreased after EPAC-1 uh, activation. Activation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And following? Especially uh, also in other stress condition. Yeah. yeah. What is the effect of EPAC-1 activation of mitochondrial respiration? And does EPAC-1 effect yeah. is dependent on the respiratory substrates used? Uh, we don't have any effect on mitochondrial or in phys under physiological condition, we didn't see any effect on mitochondrial function. You need a, a stress, you know, to evade the effect. Yeah, I think that the, the coming question is related to that. Do you think that EPAC may have a role in mitochondrial function under physiological conditions? Not only stress, but physiology. Yeah, yeah. In our ones, we only saw uh, an effect in stress condition because the knockout, the, the, the basal respiration, in EPAC1 gene deleted uh, mitochondria. Uh, in the absence of EPAC1, the, the respiration was the same in the physiological condition, mm -hmm. in the basal condition. Not really physiological, but basal condition, in vitro at least, when okay. you use uh, after CORS analysis. Yeah. So, do you mind, sorry, do you mind if I jump in again? Uh, Frank, so, so these mice, do they respond to, do they respond normally to, let's say, isoprenaline or? Yeah. Uh, they do. Yeah, yeah. So there's a stress. You mean in, in the regulation of the excitation contraction coupling? Yes. yes. Yeah, this has been demonstrating, yeah, yeah, even in the presence of the, you don't have any, the major role of basal, of EPAC is not the regulation of the excitation contraction coupling. Yes, it depends on the steady uh, state of calcium. You know, you can reveal maybe a small effect of the cellular contraction, but the, the main function is not, to my point of view, and this has been also demonstrated by Don Bers group uh, mm -hmm. that uh, 
it is not involved in uh, the regulation of the excitation. Yeah. It's dedicated to PKA, of course, you know. Okay, another question from my school slide. Uh, do you know anything of the relative importance of IPAC 1 versus IPAC 2? Uh, it depends on what, but uh, IPAC 2 has a more restricted restricted pattern of expression on the it's difficult to answer in the way that we need a specific uh, ligand for both isoforms, you know, and uh, IPAC2 has been shown also to be involved in the regulation of calcium handling like IPAC1, and IPAC2 has been shown also to have a, a differential effect on uh, arrhythmia. It has been shown that blocking IPAC2 can uh, promote arrhythmia in contrast to IPAC1, you know. So there are some controversies which depend also on the models that you use, you know. But this is an excellent question, of course. It's just the beginning of the characterization yeah. of this isoform of the specific molecular tools on the genetic animals with specific deletion of the isoform specific organs, you know. Okay, this is a question from Lueling Roderick. Great talk and an excellent description of the function of this protein. Regulation of I I I. DH2. Do you rule out effects on calcium uptake into mitochondria and it, its regulation of a ketoglutarate de dehydrogenase? I don't know actually. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Roderick. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice question. Yeah. A question from Jake Wen. Excited talk. You show PDE in your starting slide, what is the relationship between psychic MP and PDEs? Yeah, there are many things to do. Yeah, uh, we did some experiments with uh, a non-selective inhibitor of uh, PDE, IBMX, on, the, on a readout uh -huh. such as cellular hypertrophy and found that uh, when you treat the cells with IBMX, you potentiate the effect of impact one on cellular hypertrophy. So also there are some Depending on the isoform, there's a competition also between uh, uh, beta restine and uh, PDE and EPAC to uh, give some specificity of the signaling to, to, towards cellular hypertrophy. So there is a, this is a crucial play, player in, uh, of course, in That's EPAC sure. signaling PDE yeah, and must be better studied. Yeah. From an anonymous attendee, very great talk. Mitochondria subpopulation and localization, subsarcolemma versus interfibrillar mitochondria, has been demonstrated to be influenced differentially during pathophysiological cardiovascular processes. Do you think that the second catalytic domain of EPAC2 could induce differential effects on cardiomyocytes and modulate or regulate the response to ischemia reperfusion? depending on the mitochondrial subpopulation? Uh, to my knowledge, the second, not catalytic, but the second regulatory domain on, of EPAC2 is not involved in its regulation. It's more involved in the localization of EPAC2. So for sure, it will play a role if you uh, delete this uh, uh, cyclic MP by the domain because you will lose the proper localization of IPAC1 inside the cells. So this will translate for sure on, on cellular function and of course on mitochondrial uh, function. Okay, another question from Luc Bertrand. Frank, let me be provocative. If IPAC1 has no role under physiological conditions, and mainly or only bad effects under stressed conditions, why nature kept this protein expressed in the heart? It could be that the, at the very early beginning of the stress that the protein play a role, you know, at the very, very beginning of the stress. But this has to be demonstrated because we found that, at least we have in vitro evidence that when you, uh, directly activate the pack, you induce autophagy in primary cardiac myocytes. And this process was shown to be, to slow down the, pro, the, the development of hypertrophy. So on when the stress 
uh, is increased when the stress uh, increases in the inside the duration. You you lose this regulatory process and uh, you reveal the deleterious effect of epaquan. So I don't know if I was clear in my demonstration, but uh, I think uh, it's the good question. We still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Ipac two, Ipac two is well known to be involved, for instance, in insulin secretion. This was one of the first role of Ipac two that was revealed uh, ten years ago. You know, but regarding Ipac one, it could play a role also on uh, uh, cellular communication. But uh, we still need to prove whether it has a physiological action in basal condition yeah, because the knockout are variable and there is no a major uh, dysfunction really in Frank, have you measured I mean have you measured the expression of EPAC you know throughout the development process? Yeah this has been done by uh, a group in Japan a long time ago and they shown that uh, it is developmental regulated. Yeah yeah so does it reduce as as we go towards no, the, the level is increased you know the level is increased yeah yes. as we okay. as we okay From, and then there is a drop okay you know it's like, you know, re-expression in stress condition, the expression is also upregulated, you know. Okay. Like more or less like uh, genes which are involved in uh, gene reprogramming, you know. Proteins which are involved in gene reprogramming, they are also expressed mm -hmm. during the development, you know. Thank you. Okay, and we came to come to the end. Uh, Philippe Bardois said, uh, merci, Frank. And uh, that's that's the, the last uh, I think comment. Yes. From Philippe. Thank you. Uh, by the way, there's one more from Philippe that just came in, I think. Oh, okay. Um, uh, hi, Frank. To rebound on your question, what about the level of EPAC activation on a physiological stress like high intensive uh, intensity exercise? Have you looked at EPAC in no, exercise? Not in the cardiac, uh, in the myocardium, but I think in skeletal muscle, it has been shown that there is a, an increase of EPAC-1. Mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, physical stress, so it could be that play a role in a physiological condition in this stress situation, yeah, in gross muscle. Okay. Another question, sorry, there's just come in. Just a comment of Philippe, I know. No, uh, Yang. Yang. What's your comment on its expression on other tissues? EPAC1 seems to be expressed relatively low in heart, but high in other organs. Uh, I do not fully agree because in the human heart, it's quite uh, high exp I highly expressed. Think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it is highly expressed in the kidney, mm -hmm. also in the brain, but in specific region of the brain, yeah. Beta cells of the pancreas also? Uh, pancreas, yes, but at moderate expression, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if there's no more questions coming up, <laughs> I think we've, we've finished. Thank you, Frank, for all your questions answered and for your talk. It was very uh, provocative again. <laughs> thank you to thank you. you. Thank you all. To all the audience, and uh, thank you, Davor, uh, for your input. Now, Frank, really, Excellent. really great talk. I, I really enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. And Cecilia, thank you for sharing. Um, so, and thank you to the audience. And join us for tomorrow. It's our last webinar. Uh, with that, we close the series. And um, I think it's been a very, very good last week with the webinars. And Frank, thank you for contributing to the really, really high level of science. Thank you to you, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.